The Newton Slave Burial Ground in Barbados is a historical site that holds great significance in the context of the island's history of plantation slavery. Situated in the parish of Christ Church, it is one of the few known slave burial grounds on the island, and it serves as a poignant reminder of the enslaved Africans who were brought to Barbados and the hardship they endured. Hello and welcome to Monuments. I'm Rashid Best. Thanks for joining us. This episode will feature the Newton Burial Ground, where 570 enslaved individuals were interred. Excavation of the site during the 1970s unearthed revealing information about the lives of our forefathers who were interred there. This information is preserved by the Barbados Museum and Historical Society and the Department of Archives. In January of 1998, Anthropologist Professor Jerome Handler, who conducted further research, donated that additional research material to the Department of the Archives. The Barbados Museum and Historical Society subsequently hosted a press conference where they discussed the artifacts and their potential use. We begin with the director of the Society, Alessandro Cummings. That the um, Barbados Museum has maintained a, a long interest in the information and the artifacts that have been excavated from the site. Perhaps more precious than the, the physical remains that have been excavated is the information that is generated from these products that is assisting us continually from the time of excavation in the early 70s even up to the present and we expect in the future, the information that is generated about the historical past of plantation slavery and later emancipation in Barbados. The site, as uh, the president has alluded to, has been the location of significant and in, indeed um, far-reaching research undertaken by Professor Handler um, for over three decades. And we have been permitted to benefit from this through the provision of artifacts related to the Newton Plantation. And um, we are indeed this week the recipient of uh, <coughs> a further generous donation from Professor Handler of artifacts related to that site. I want to stress the importance of Newton and indeed I think um, Professor Handler and, and Kevin will speak to in more detail about the site. It is, it is not possible for me to frame um, how critical the, the site and the resulting artifacts and indeed I have to say the human remains, because it is a burial ground. It is the burial ground of our ancestors in Barbados. How important that site is to the development of knowledge of world history, the development of knowledge of Barbadian and Caribbean history, and indeed the development of knowledge about ourselves and our identity. What we envisage for the, the role of the artifacts that has been alluded to before is beyond the scope of the current um, exhibits, which now are in place in the um, Jubilee Gallery of the museum. We anticipate the use of many of these collections. And I, I want to mention that Professor Handler's um, donations form a major part of our collections from that site and that other uh, archaeologists more recently have continued with the research from that site. But these collections we expect will form the core, a very important core, of the artifacts that will be used for the development of a slavery museum in Barbados a slavery museum that speaks to the experience of enslaved Africans on the soil of Barbados and 
to allude to and interpret that experience, not just in Barbados, but probably in the Eastern Caribbean. The proposal for a slavery museum has long been of importance to the plans of the Barbados Museum for the development of <coughs> museums in the island. But we started in earnest in 1999 um, with the development of a research project. And we are looking forward to accelerating that process once we have completed the development of the African Gallery, which has been the nature of, uh, or rather it has been the subject of earlier uh, press conferences such as these. So we're looking forward to the, the um, exhibit of several of the artifacts from um, the site in such a, a major new facility. And we look forward to the development of research and knowledge, as I said, about Barbadian history and about ourselves through the interpretation of that site and the artifacts that are associated with it. Professor Jerome Handler began his presentation with a contextualization of the Newton Plantation burial site. He spoke of its importance to world history. As everybody knows, for many, many, many years, even today, the vast majority, dealing in the period of slavery, the vast majority of people were either of African birth or African descent. Barbados was, in a fundamental way, an African or an African-derived island. For many years, the history of the people, the vast majority of the people on the island, was left hidden or covered up, so to speak. And one of my major efforts over the years has been trying to reconstruct what can be said about the life of the vast majority of the population for something like 200 years. To this end, then, much of my work has been devoted to looking into conventional historical records, but these leave a great deal of things to be desired. And so, to make a long story short, decided in the early 1970s to engage in archaeological investigations at various plantations in Barbados, trying to find remnants of the slave villages. Uh, this was not terribly successful, and through a series of events, all of which were quite serendipitous, we ended up at Newton Cemetery, we ended up at Newton Plantation, and while my colleagues were trying to find the site of the former slave village, I interviewed one of the old drivers, I could speak Bayesian at the time with a terrible American accent, and I, I, as a fellow who had been brought up on the plantation, I sort of, in a desultory way, started asking him if he, ever, if he knew a place on the plantation where their people had been buried. And he recalled then, this was an older fellow now, I guess he was about what age I am at now, he recalled that his mother or his grandmother had told him there was a spot on the plantation where the old folks buried. And I said, show me where it is. And we went out there to the spot, and my colleagues began doing what archaeologists do, testing around by digging little holes, and very rapidly we discovered human bones. Now, what is important to note, and we didn't realize it at the time, was that Barbados is, so to speak, a vast cemetery. Hundreds of thousands of people died here during the period of slavery, both black and white. And the vast majority of the African, the African and African descended people were buried on plantation cemeteries. I mean, this we know through documentary sources. Every plantation had a cemetery. People were buried on these cemeteries. They were not marked in any way, as you would find in a church burial ground. So the discovery of Newton, and even to this day, and Newton is not unique. What makes it unique, it's the only one that we found. And this is what makes it so extraordinarily precious. Now, in the early 1970s, when we excavated at Newton, and subsequently as we began to analyze the artifacts in the cemetery, and we went into the literature, began to discover more and more as the years went on that the distinctiveness of Newton uh, was was terribly dramatic in the sense that increasingly archaeologists were working in British America and mainland and North America, the Caribbean and Brazil and so on and so forth, 
And though occasionally human bones were found, or the remnants of cemeteries were found at construction sites, Newton remained the only undisturbed cemetery yet found of people who had been born in Africa or their descendants. And I want to underscore, this is once again emphasizing the importance of Newton, that we're dealing with an undisturbed area in the sense that what is in the ground now is exactly the way, well, not exactly, but this is the way people were interred. It has not been disturbed by construction, by bulldozers and what have you. So when you are carefully excavating, and the archaeologist is very, very careful in dealing with this sort of material, you are seeing things as they were when the people were originally interred. Now, until 1991, Newton remained the largest and the earliest undisturbed slave cemetery known in the New World. In 1991, in the process of massive construction in Lower Manhattan and New York City, the old African burial ground in New York was discovered. And ultimately, only a fraction of that cemetery was excavated, but ultimately over 400 burials were taken out of the ground, and today, and they were they were at Howard University for many years where they were analyzed and just recently last month, in fact, they were reinterred in a ceremonial context in New York. So Newton can no longer claim to be the largest yet discovered, but Newton can still claim to be the largest plantation slave cemetery he uncovered. And as a matter of fact, the Newton remains are far more reflective of an African past and display African influences than the ones in New York. Now, as the years have gone on, the value of Newton then is considerably enhanced because we tried to find additional cemetery sites in Barbados to no avail. So today, Newton remains an incredibly valuable place a potential for looking in a window into the past of Barbados that is not readily available elsewhere. And I'm just gonna make a couple of more comments and then throw it open. The other thing is that the window that we get into Newton, we've only excavated, by the way, a very, very small percentage. Most of the people who were originally interred in Newton are still there. We only excavated quite by maybe about 8%, a very, very small percentage of the total area. What some of these artifacts have told us, the artifacts are not the kinds of things that you would find in the tombs of King Tut in Egypt. They're very, very modest things, okay? But some of them are still very unique in terms of New World finds. Some of them associated with a particular interment have not been found anywhere else in the New, in the New World. They are here in the museum and they will be on display. So in brief, what Newton has been telling us over the years through analysis of various of the artifacts, various of the bones, the teeth, and so on. We've gained insights into the religious beliefs of the slaves, their conception of the afterlife, the recognition of persons within the slave community who had higher status as viewed by the slaves themselves rather than by the masters. They've told us about various African influences in uh, interment patterns. They've told us a great deal about health, nutrition, and disease. They've even told us when people were, children were weaned from their mother's breasts by examination of the teeth and a variety of other things. That is indeed a privilege um, to be able to curate this collection. And I actually look forward to the day when the proposed slavery museum indeed becomes a reality and the Newton collection will form the core of that museum. Uh, a museum that allows us perhaps a greater understanding of our ancestors and a museum that will allow us to indeed reflect upon the people and the society that we've become. As we have heard from our Prime Minister, efforts have been made to preserve and commemorate the Newton Slave Burial Ground, ensuring that it is respected as a memorial site. There will be a well-designed heritage district serving as a global hub for research on slavery and the slave trade, as well as a cultural center. One of the features of this district will be a research institute 
and a museum. The artifacts unearthed from the burial ground will be incorporated into the Heritage District. In response to a question on the nature of the artifacts, Professor Handler went on to detail the design of the artifacts and their importance. Not very dramatic things in an objective sense. They become dramatic, and I'm going to answer your question, but I don't want to. Uh, they become dramatic because of their uniqueness, okay? So if you're talking about the artifacts there, well, you find a lot of bits and pieces of pottery, okay? Remnants of uh, the slaves, when they would inter their dead, would perform ceremonies at the grave sites. And they would perform in a very African pattern annual ceremonies over the grave sites. And these ceremonies would involve, among other things, placing food and drink. And so what you find, these broken bits and pieces of pottery represent those kinds of things. We find European clay pipes. And it's, but in archeological terms, there are zillions of fragments of these white clay pipes scattered through all out British America. What is absolutely unique about the collection at Newton is that we have whole pipes. I think there are 21, which doesn't sound very dramatic, but consider the, considering the almost infinite number of fragments of clay pipes that have shown up in archeological sites at Williamsburg, at Yorktown, in Northern New York State, this collection here at Newton is absolutely crucial. And as a side note, those clay pipes were very instrumental in enabling us to date various portions of the ceremony. And they are also what we call grave goods. They were found interred with the burials, among other things, reflecting a very common African practice in which you inter with the dead goods of value, which they will then be of use in the afterworld, all right? Then uh, I forget how many hundreds of glass beads of one kind or another. The beads also become very interesting because the beads were not only used as a matter of body ornamentation, and beads were very common trade goods in Africa, and people were using beads all the time, but the most precious collection of artifacts cluster around the burial of a, a man who was interred somehow in the late 1600s or early 1700s. And this fellow had with him a variety of artifacts which to this very day are absolutely unique among New World finds. One of them was a particular kind of pipe that has been traced back to the Gold Coast, Ghana, in the late 17th century, various kinds of bracelets, and a very, very elaborate necklace with some very unique characteristics. Among the unique characteristics is a type of bead of which there are only two samples known in the New World. Both of them were found at Newton Cemetery. And this is a bead, I wish we had brought this to the press conference, because it's one of these artifacts, I hope I'm answering your question, it's one of these artifacts that an archeologist looks at and says, my gosh, if you could only talk, tell me what you have seen. This particular bead, which I think, uh, is a red bead, large red bead, which was manufactured in southern India at a, at a bead manufacturing region, which for something like 500 years made a particular kind of bead that was traded throughout the area. This particular bead somehow made its way across the Indian Ocean as part of all kinds of trade things, somehow made its way, we don't know, across Africa or around the Horn of Africa, ended up somewhere in West Africa, was transported across the Atlantic, and ultimately found its resting place with a particular man whose name we will never know, all right, in this cemetery at Newton. And if you look at that bead and you say, tell me what you have seen, 
that Meade lived through a lot, traveled thousands upon thousands of miles, and witnessed a great many extraordinary events in human history. We don't know if that bead actually went across the Atlantic with the man with whom it was interred, but it comprised part of a necklace. It was presumably the centerpiece in a necklace that also had teeth of some large dog, vertebrae from some large fish, and a variety of other things. And we suspect that that man was a medicine man, the kind of person who in the slave community would be the one who was most deferred to and revered, a man who may have functioned on the first gang somewhere and was innocuous, was not particularly paid any great attention to by the plantation owner or manager, but within the slave village itself had a great deal of influence. The Newton site was designated as a site of memory along the transatlantic slave route. In recognition of this, a sign was erected in 2003. Left of the sign, the triangle. The periphery of the logo represents the triangular trade, the transatlantic trade. The red signifies the blood spilled by the slaves. You see a black hand and a white hand, and in the just, you see an outline of a face. In the middle of the black and the white hand, and the hands are intertwined, there is a tear, a red tear, which is supposed to signify the blood of the slaves, and the hands to signify the integration and coming together of the black and the white races. And as I said, this sign was designed, the logo designed by a team. Discussions about our intangible heritage are ever present. Increasingly, our people are beginning to see the value in this type of heritage and are taking steps to ensure its preservation. We now present an interview that occurred on the site of the burial ground, where one Barbadian emphasized the critical nature of education and information. Tell us how important this is to say bringing Barbadians as well as Caribbean people in touch with their cultural heritage. I think it is important that everybody start to, you know, make their linkages and roots of, of our origins in the Caribbean and to understand a little bit more, not just the, the violence of it, but understand where ethnic groups, the things that we do, how it relates to what, what was done then, who we are, the language we speak, the way how we speak, and the way how we cook, things we do. Um, you know, at one time, like for instance, our grandparents were beaten if you went to right with your left hand. And wh where did that come from? And I'm now finding from some research that um, the Igbo people, for instance, didn't use the left hand for certain things, and writing would have been one. Okay. Do you think the initiative is being done in the right way, say going through tourism and stuff like that? Do you think there's, is there any other way we could have, say, gotten, well, got, we could have made black people more aware of their cultural heritage? Of course we could make black people more aware, but you see, it's a, this is the way how people can utilize this to, to make um, an economic contribution. It, it's for tourism. So I'm not sure if really and truly uh, the educating of the people to understand their origins uh, is, is the first thing. But it, it should be. It should be. Because without the educating people about, about it, we won't be able to pass on to other people and say, hey, you know, there's a heritage site and so forth, and talk to you about the heritage site. Why are they going to tell somebody about it? So they need to work with the Ministry of Education or some form of education must be put in place for them to really understand 
uh, about the say. She is indeed correct. Education is critical for our people. The proposed heritage district at Newton will be an interactive centre of historical and cultural significance, serving as a tangible link to Barbados' past and providing an opportunity to reflect on the experiences of those who were enslaved. Visitors are expected to be educated through the process of interacting with the artefacts and exhibits. Of course, we cannot overlook the economic benefits that the island will enjoy through heritage tourism. In our next episode, we shall introduce you to the design of the monument that will adorn the Newton Slave Burial Ground. Thanks for your time. I'm Rashid Best. This has been Monuments. <laughs>